Hey ho, it's Marco Catanio. Um, I want to have a quick chat uh, about functions and processes. Uh, what are functions and what are processes and how do they work and how do they come together? Okay, so what are functions? Well, first of all, the definition. It says here a function is a team or group of people and the tools they use to carry out one or more processes or activities. So it's like a bunch of people together working on something to achieve something. It also says a function has the following meanings. An intended purpose of a configuration item, and a configuration item is like any item that is part of your IT infrastructure that you want to or that you need to control, person, team, process or IT service. So in other words, uh, what's the configuration or what's the person or what's the team going to, going to do? To perform the intended purpose correctly, um, in other words, does it actually function? Okay, let's uh, look at some functions then. Uh, functions are also known as business units and uh, some organizations also refer to them as departments. So here are some examples. Sales, uh, most companies have like a sales area, you've got marketing, marketing area, you've got like uh, human resources, uh, recruiting people. You've got management, uh, well, managing the organization, and here's another one, legal, looking after all the legal stuff. Okay, so functions, it's like people working in, in, in business units, uh, often performing like similar tasks. Now, of course, here we're looking at like typical like organizational functions, but we can also like, uh, well, talk about like IT functions. For example, the service desk with lots of smiley faces. You've got like the desktop team uh, looking after the desktops. You've got like the network team looking after the network gear. You've got like the mainframe team looking after the mainframes and finally you've got like third level external teams like external functions why not so uh, you've got 10 examples here of like functions you find in your organization and also within it so you've probably noticed by now that typically if you look at a function then typically the people and the roles you find within a function uh, share the same skills uh, share similar knowledge and attitude. Uh, in other words, they, they often share the same capabilities or often the same capabilities are shared within a function. Also, the people that actually work in a function often speak the same language. I mean, the people working that work in marketing actually speak the marketing language. And the people that work in sales, well, they speak the sales language. The people who work in like uh, the network team, they, they speak the network language. So it becomes easier for them also to share information with each other. Um, also, if you, if you look at the roles of the people working in functional environments or in functions, uh, they often also they can actually act as each other's backup. So if one person isn't there, then often the other can pick up the work and actually continue with the work. So uh, roles um, in a function typically become like one team. There's a real team spirit within a function because uh, you all feel happy in your role and you know what it's all about. So it really creates stability a functional environment it creates stability for all the members working in that function can if you are taken out of your for example your marketing function and all of a sudden they put you the next day hey, they put you in IT you won't feel happy but if you've got a marketing background and they put you in a marketing function you can actually like be efficient be effective be productive and that's what creating functions it's all about it's all about making optimal use of the of the capabilities the skills and the knowledge of the people you put in those functions So, if a function is a team or group of people, and the tools they use to carry out one or more processes or activities, then what's a process? The definition says, a process is a structured set of activities designed to accomplish a specific objective. So, it's the stuff you do to achieve something. It says here, a process takes inputs, for example, coal. It processes it burns the coal and adds value. Why? Because we're now creating, we're actually like converting coal into energy and I, I need energy to drive my computer. So a process, it takes inputs, it processes something within the process box and it generates outputs. Uh, also processes are typically like looked at like from an end-to-end -end point of view. Uh, what I'm trying to say is like, for example, the incident management process. You follow an incident all the way from cradle to grave. So from the moment you like record the incident, 
until the moment you for example successfully restore a service to a user we're looking at like managing incidents the same thing applies to change management from the moment I fill in a request for change form until the moment my change has been implemented and successfully like reviewed I'm actually doing change management the same thing applies to information security management it's the process that deals end-to-end -end with the topic security that we want to make IT a secure environment so processes are like the end-to-end -end activities you perform together to achieve something so let's talk about the cross-functional nature and behavior of processes uh, you've already seen these five functions here so let's assume a user has an issue and a user contacts the service desk hey can you please restore the service for me so the first thing the service desk will do is they will record the incident if the initial service desk analyst can't find a solution he or she will typically assign the incident to another member in the same team well if the service desk doesn't have the right skills or knowledge to find a solution they will start to escalate the incident towards other functions within the own organization or sometimes even external to the own organization and you go to like an external uh, function hopefully at some stage a number of people working in various functions hopefully together they will find a solution to restore the service uh, they resolve the issue they will inform the service desk so the service desk can then actually inform the user and the cycle is complete the service has been restored so we're talking about the incident management process here being like an end-to-end -end process you've got all these functions working together to uh, with the same aim eh, to restore the service to the user so typically processes are like cross-functional you have to like go over a number of functions you have to work together to make something happen that's true for most processes I would say especially in larger organizations only for in, in very very small organizations a process may be fully contained within one function but it's like for, for larger organizations very very unlikely I would say typically uh, processes are like do have like a cross-functional nature okay another quick uh, practice what you preach exercise uh, the objective is to understand some of your own functions and how they work uh, the idea is to create a table with two columns in the left column you're going to list all the functions you find within your business I provided two examples uh, marketing and sales and the right column you can use the right column to list all the functions you can find in your own IT environment uh, for example desktop support and the service desk I would say well try try to list as many functions as you can find within your own uh, business environment have fun okay and here comes another simple question it says which one of the following statements is incorrect answer a in a scenario of a process it's likely that more than one function is involved answer B roles working in functions often share a similar skill set answer C functions require the management of communication channels between them and answer D functions always perform the full process I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about the answer okay well hopefully uh, you pick one by now uh, the answer is answer D functions always perform the full process no because processes are in I would say in most circumstances actually cross-functional where a number of functions a number of departments a number of business units have to work together yeah. for example if you think of the car manufacturing process how many functions are working together actually like to manufacture a car come on you've got design you've got logistics you've got sales you've got manu manufacturing and all these business units have all have to come all have to come together all have to work together to for example manufacture cars and that's typically how processes work So what's next? Well, the next topic will cover the process model, or the also known as the high-level process model, and the characteristics of processes. I would say live long and prosper, and see you back next time. Cheerio.